I mean, Nikhil my Jaivan. Yo. You know. Yeah. So I think this thing basically was just in me. Yeah, I think you were a savant. Old, you you know? were a savant. I don't know what is that. It's complicated uh, <laughs> terminology Big words. for an old man like me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they know what you say in your peers. <laughs> you know. But yeah, savant, what is savant? I might, I might, I might ask. No, I don't know. I just I came prepared to use big words. Cow, okay. okay. You don't even know. Okay, all right. Cow. Okay, like, we'll leave it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Podcast and Chill. Today I'm hanging out with an icon, not a legend, so nah. this guy is an icon. Yeah. Yeah. Please welcome <laughs> Brasilo <laughs> Marque. Oh, yes. my brother, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming through, man. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. that's special. Nobody has the same name. Yeah. yeah. Maybe probably some, what's your, what's your surname? Mukwebo. Mukwebo. Yeah. Somebody has that same name. It was usually been on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, you know, actually. But this one, yeah. it's my creation, Baba. Yeah. You know. But I read that... Um, Mube was your your your, your biological father. Biological father. Yeah. Make was your my stepfather. Oh, okay. Yes. So and then I made this surname. Yeah, yeah. There's no one like it. And where we at now? Are we Brazil or must we call you Ah, uh, well, you pick and choose. You can call me <laughs> Silo. Maybe Brazil is not. Yeah, I had, I had. There was a time I had issue uh, with uncle. Yeah. You know, I think I just turned forty, and uh, and also it was like I, I was. I just come back from the UK, yeah. you know, so I've been a while. And I, when I left, I was Brazil. Yeah. And then I get and I, you know, get to a parking area and lean on Elizabeth. Hey, hey uncle. <laughs> but hey, man, I want to go in. Hey, man. I'm going to uncle. You know? I had issues with that for a while. Yeah. You know, and then came time. I, oh. When does this turn up? You know, <laughs> you know, and nakis na kipo na kar na wah, I man kimujita, kisara ko aki, you know. Yeah. But I had issues with that. But now, well, you can call me Brazil. Lo. Keeps me young. I still see you as Achi Morocco, funny enough. After uh, all these years, you know. I know, funny. And uh, you know, you know, talking about Achi is that. And uh, when I came back from the, uh, I mean, I went to the UK to do um, uh, Lion King. Lion King. Yeah. You know, and uh, when I came back. After five years, being out of the country, and I'm like, and this is arch, and I was like, is this thing still hanging on like that? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah. And I was like, God, this thing was big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, and it was. Yeah. It was. It I remember was. the first time I met you, uh, mm-hmm. so I was standing in for DJ Spoo at, at, at YFM. He was doing the breakfast show. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you couldn't yeah, make yeah. it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I couldn't make it, Shem. No, he couldn't make oh, it. Oh, he couldn't make it, okay. Yes, and you were the, the guest on the show that day. All right, so I okay. I did an interview with you. All right, okay. And I remember us. You're on an old age. I don't even remember. <laughs> and I was fine. Did you still have gra- dreads? Or no, 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 no. I was a li- young Maybe that is why. Yeah. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm a Excused. And then Sola <laughs> asked him, what's his body yeah, count? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. But I mean, that's typical of you. Yeah, and it was like, hey, what I'm fun? Oh, hey, man, don't disrespect me like that. <laughs> what kind of a question is that? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a serious question. And you were asking my body count, yeah. Yeah. And I, that's how I reacted? Yeah, you're like, hey, don't ask me such nonsense. Aye, okay, then I'm yeah? sharp. But what is, <laughs> your, what is your body count, Phil? Ah, uh, bro, it's an, you can't even count it. <laughs> I don't even know myself. Eh? I don't even know. You used to make our mothers go crazy every single night. I know, hey, bro. And, and basically, I started the body count even before I I, I made your mothers crazy. <laughs> you know, You're... because I can assure you, I mean, I got into acting when? 1981? Jeez. Yeah. And we were touring. I mean, I joined Gibson yeah. in 1981 and we were touring all over the country. Mm. You know, and <laughs> wherever I went. It used to be wild. Dish. Wow. Oh. 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 
<laughs> way before it was Mr. Morocco. Way before. He was making them arch their backs. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> You've been in the industry for 40 years, right? 40 years. Four, four decades. 40 years. Before we get into how you got in the industry, right? mm-hmm. I want you to explain to me like the different kind of stages the industry went through because you've been around for four decades. 40 years, yes. Yeah. Yes. So obviously when you started yeah. and then comes the generation stage right, and right. then comes the social media stage right now. Right. Like how has it been the past four decades? Wait, well, when I used to like when you get to this age, you know, air rises. <laughs> yeah, from nowhere. <laughs> and you burn. <laughs> but anyway, this is where it started. Mm. 1975, I see a play for the first time. I'm 15 years old. Yeah, Gibson. Gibson can test how long. Yeah. And I saw that play and uh, boy, I couldn't stop imitating what I saw in that play. What are you doing at a play at 15? No, actually, um, my father, my biological father, was actually nearly stark manisa brakeep. Okay. You know what I mean? So when, you know, there will be, you know, tic- a, a ticket sale, a salesperson and would collect the money, my father was always a doorman. Oh. Ah, be shy. Yeah, yeah. Ah, be Too much. Ah, be shy. Ah, be shy. Ah, be shy. Ah, be shy. Oh. Ah, be shy. And when you would say, ah, I'm a young child. Yeah. He had this thing of saying, he has me number nine. Look, Sharla, bang. Wang awi. <laughs> Just like that. So he knew, you know what I mean, that uh, we are in Lasley, Lasley. So yeah, he was and a dog. Now. Yeah. Now. Actually, he never got to hit me, though there was one time he nearly trapped me. Mm. But let him tell him. He nearly trapped me that day, uh, and it was during... Um, 76, just after the riots. Yes, yes, You yes. know, uh, and uh, you know things were dangerous. My boys mm. were killy, were shooting, and all that. And I mean, on one Saturday, you know, we pio no mtoada. Aye to cinema. Aye to used to be the cinema. My boni aye to cinema. I just say mat lava lava. You know, hey man, kisses were had in that cinema. <laughs> So I'm taking out. Uh, I decide to take my girlfriend out to the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, damn this guy, and he was not a taxi man, but we clever as as he as so we. Yeah. A lot of people actually knows him mm. because he was the goalkeeper of Orlando Pirates in the late fifties, oh. early sixties. Mm. I think he was in the same squad as Jomo's father, Skara. Hectic. You know, so um. Mang Puma, cinema, bega pirate, ane viva valiente pirate ngayo. You know, so level viva violent. Imi le pamgwe lo kosa. So Mang Puma ngomtu ane ngwe la pesbo. You know, no man shy kola kadi. Darling, boni little ever young she. You know, the following day, Ben Kala and then usually we'd come. You know, he would come and do um. You know, and then my zabat we one of my was all that. Was all that. I'm telling me. He was amazing in one aspect, my father. That, but we clever. Yes, whatever. So Fire Town, you know, because that's where he, you know, he grew up. But also, is Zulu Sake, but is Zulu A. You know, I went on. I'm telling you, you know, what he, Ngabo, yes, and you were Langati in the Katunga Pelepel. Yo. You know, translation, you know, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like a like a like a a like a like a like a like a like a <laughs> yet my quad yet we are oh this is the thing we are calling me Zulu eight so man get papa papa quickly because I've been raised by my stepfather yeah. so um, my understanding of Zulu is not that great. Like, it's not that great so you know he wants to try and get into the sword mm. and I was I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi. Yes, I have a very long kubula. That's an English telling you fan belt. Fan belt. Exactly. I screamed. I screamed. My aunt came and I can't. How you come to her again? How you come to her again? That's crazy. You know, but yeah, so. That's how I got to see how long, mm. you know, because uh, he called us to come to the, you know, to the hall. And it was at Mufula Hall. And Mufula Hall is no longer there. Mm. It got burned during uh, the 1976 riots. Mm. So I went there and I saw the play. And after seeing that play, like I said, I, man, I couldn't stop, stop imitating what I saw in the play, mm. you know. And... Um, then my cousins, my who were a little older than me, you know, in their whatever, but I was fifteen, you know, older teens, nineteen. They were my cousins were there, yeah. And his friends, they were in a play. One of the guys who was in, I mean, in the play, and uh, who my cousin was growing up with is Len Maseko, who was the editor of. Um, who was the editor of uh, Soweten? Okay. Mm. And Robert Maguaza, a photographer. Mm. So they were his, uh, my cousin's buddies, and they were in the cast. So, mangu mo na beling funugya la penang ngi boni sugut. Eh, man yakumbul Africa when and the guy who played Africa was Brenda Fassi's, I think, cousin. Oh yeah, wow. Olisi Fassi. Yes. 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 So, uh, and Olisi Fassi used to have a gap. You know, I lost a tooth when I was about 13. Mm. So being the cape, like, well, can I mind you show you my prosthetics? <laughs> How do you lose the gap? No, I was playing soccer. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, and somebody, I think, big, I'm a pla, I'm a pal, 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 I'm a you know, like yeah. you know, but I think because at that time, you know, one didn't know whether you can actually fill in and went into the corner, yeah. mind. so that's how I ended up losing that. Yeah. So, um, policy first, he had the gap, and uh, you know, and because of uh, that, he was more my role model. Mm. So I said, you know, Africans, you know, you know, I'm acting like him, you mm. know, I'm doing all the things. And then one of the, the guys said, but hey man, let me know when I'm getting it done. I see if I get then we play C and I. So that's how they got, I mean, and then they got me into the play. Mm. And that's when it all started. Yeah. My first, first stage uh, appearance. Well, it was in 1976, January, I remember that. It was actually before the riots. Mm. So actually, I started acting in 1976. And, and why is your, your, your stepfather uh, raising you? Where's your dad at the time? Ah, my time. <laughs> you know, when the guy, he, how, like how he, you know, he's no longer, he's not taking responsibility. You know, you know, you know, Started. He 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 actually got to see it. Wow. He 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 didn't see. I don't think he saw generations. But one thing that I remember, I don't know if you know the movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Yes, yes, I do. With yes. Sydney Poitier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's one guy who, uh, another African guy who Africana, uh, somebody Pledson. I can't remember uh, the whole name now. But he uh, translated the movie into a play. Okay. And uh, we, it was, I was performing it in, uh, what is this place? Napec. Mm. Deben. Yeah. At the Playhouse. So when I'm doing the play there, there was an article. It was done, I remember it was done by Fred Kumalo. And there was a picture of me and a white girl. Wow. You know. Jungle fever. Mwah. <laughs> You know, yeah. so my friends there, my 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 father's friends. But oh, my brisket! I mean, that is like eighty something. You know, I mean, so, of, yeah. you know, it is something. I mean, apartheid is still yeah, 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 you, know, yeah. I, you know, as a pet. You yeah. know, but oh, my brisket! Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> but anyway, you know, guess guess who's coming to dinner was also like a very remarkable turning point. Yeah. You know, in my acting career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And are you still going in school or are you just focusing on, on, on acting now? No, I'm focusing on acting, but it's it's gone to another level, I think, mm. for from where I'm standing now. Mm. You know, uh you know, uh what is it? I'm actually even contemplating on writing an acting book now. Yeah, you yeah. know that is how I've actually uh, you know got steep into acting, and I love it. And you asked me later on that have I done a directed film, whatever directed. I've never directed uh, films or television because I I think there is just too much pressure there. Yeah. But what I, what I wanted to do was explore the whole acting space, what acting is all about, and when you're directing film or television. It's about time, mm. you know what I mean? But when you are in the theater, you get the time to explore a moment, mm. interrogate it, make the actor try this, try that. So you have, you know, groom mm. to explore. You don't get that on film. Mm. Uh, and one thing that I used to say, sometimes people would ask me, what do you prefer, theater oh, or film? Mm. You know what I mean? And I'd say, dude, those are both my children. Mm. I love them both. I can't, I can't choose one. But the way I would say one of one um, theater acting, it is like cooking on the stove. Mm. And then film or television acting, it's microwave cooking. Mm. Because there, you, mm. you, you, you it's pa out, mm. you know, and everything must be done. Mm. But this other one, you know, actually theater acting, if anybody is a serious actor, do theater. Mm. Because it gives you time to explore how to know how to repeat one moment and make it effective every night hit the same mark every day at the end of the day what you tend to do is you develop technique mm. you know wow. yeah would i be correct in saying that you started acting because you wanted attention maybe like from your dad or your stepfather or something nah. not at all nah mm. hey not a man I was hot from childhood. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers. Drop that fucking thing of yours. <laughs> no, dude, I was hot from as a young boy. And I somehow I just knew good name. And there's something. Yeah. There's something. So you're a cool kid in school? Yeah? You're a cool kid. Ah, dude. Yeah. So at the at the I think at the age of, uh, I mean, when I was growing up, ne, yeah. you know, like some day, I don't, well, I don't, they don't do it these days. Yeah. You know, I'm like, every Sunday you always put your Sunday best, yes. you know, you go to church and you come back, have lunch, and after that, you know, you go out with a Sunday best and, you know, shlangana. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what we used to do is, is no glala, imshad. Hey. Bro. <laughs> I was always the groom. Hey. Hey, <laughs> so. What does that say? Yeah. <laughs> so I was affirmed then. Yeah, you know, Horne, I'm going to do a huge body count. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And what mm. I like about you is that you're <clears> self-taught. <throat> you never studied. No, I didn't. I didn't. I did. I didn't study at all. You know. Um, it, yeah. But my, you know, I had an uncle, mm. uh, Kenima Josie. Uh, Kenima Josie basically was my father's uh, mm. of my biological father. So, and uh, he did Sikalo with Gibson Kent. Mm. And uh, so, when the bug was beginning, like feeling, no, I want to act, I want mm. to, you know, um, my, I went to him mm. and he said to me, and I said, hey man, hey man, 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 I'm Funuk act. And he was very flamboyant, mm. you know. And he said, drama. And he was, that was my first lesson. Drama. Drama is human, the human condition in dialogue and action on stage. Mm. And then he said, actor. And he broke down the word actor. Mm. He said, actor. A stands for action. C stands for creativity. T stands for technique. O stands for observation. R stands for reaction. All these things you use as an actor. Oh, that's wow. profound. That was my first lesson. Mm. And uh, you know that, um, and yeah, you know, and he taught me whatever, and uh, you know, maybe imitating, looking at what he does, and you know, 
but later on like and that's you know as i develop as an actor you know sometimes uh, actors when they talk about things man hey you know we'll talk about you know you, you know when i get into character yes, you know, yes, I, yes. i mean that is the biggest bs ever For <laughs> <me>. <laughs> i'm sorry hey. i'm going to dispel this myth hey. there's no getting into character character is defined by actions mm. Uh, like now, yeah. I'm talking to you. 100%. You know? I'm in character now. You're in character, Baba. <laughs> you know. And uh, how? what is it that has defined to be an interviewer, a podcaster, yes, and whatever? Yes. You're doing the actions. Mm. You know what I mean? No, I'm a podcast. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. you do the, the things, the actions that define that. We've got cameramen here. Mm. They are cameramen. And, they do and the they're action. doing the actions of a cameraman. Now, these guys, when they have to go, they say, oh, I've got to get into character to be a cameraman. Mm. Do they do that? No. no. They just get on and do the actions. Mm. I see. You see what I mean? But mm. I think, what, yeah, go ahead. They are being themselves, though. You are gonna be Archie, which is different from Silo. Now, here's where... where, where or maybe where, they're you, not. You know. <laughs> or maybe they are, but they, or they both rock. <laughs> no, but, but, but let me Huge tell you. No, no, but you see, like, because as an actor, you end up playing things that people do. No. Because I can end up wanting playing, a, you know, you can write a story about a cameraman. Yes. Mm. Do, do, do you see what I mean? Mm. So all I've got to do, and the, th the person who writes the story actually writes what he does. Mm. He wakes up every morning the way he loves his camera. When he wakes up, the very first thing he touches is the camera. It is camera. Mm. He will be checking it, looking at it, whatever, you know. You know, and whatever, and then, you know, prepare it, maybe wipe it, just make sure that it's nice. You know, he, he will do that and wait for being called to come and shoot. So you tap into those actions. And no, the, the writer is going to write those actions. Mm. He's going to write those actions. And all you've got to do as an actor, and acting is what? Doing. Mm. You are going to do those, those actions. Actions. Oh, I actions. See. A for action. Exactly. Mm. So now I think what we want to say when when you say when I get into mm. character, what we are saying is we are focusing on the actions that we are going to do. I'm going to do this and do that mm. and do that and do. so you want a complete and you know co a concentration to go and follow those actions yeah. that have been written in the play or in the script. Yeah. Wow. So, but now, we've got to make it sound esoteric. Yeah. Something out of this world. And we say, you know, when I get into character, you know, when I get into character, <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, then I'm in character. <laughs> no, that's. A, I, I think we want to say, you know, look at how hard I'm working. Yes. But the truth of the matter is that all you're just doing is following the actions. You know, I don't know which classics you know: mm. Romeo and Juliet, yes, Macbeth, yes, yes. Julius Caesar. You probably could see different versions of those th of, of oh, those oh, yeah. of those stories. The actions that Jul uh, Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare has written them down. Mm. All the actor does is do, is do mm. and do those actions. Yeah. And uh, you may find that you like so and so's way of doing those actions yeah. because all you do in the script, there is no character. Mm. But a series of actions that a, a writer has put on there. And you as an actor, what you do, you bring your whole life experience. Mm. And on top of this, because what you do on the script, it is just word on a page. But you give those words on the page form because those words now are going to be said by you. And the words on the plane, we actually call them lines. They are not lines. They are thoughts. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? So basically, you take those lines, you make them your thoughts. And I'll give you an example. You, what you're doing now, the questions that you did, the conversation that we are having, we have it transcribed. Mm. We give it to actors. Mm. And they, and, and I mean, 
Is that a line that you're saying? No, it's mm-hmm. not a line. Mm-hmm. It is your reaction and your thought. Yes. And it's yes. like even no man can can no man just say actually man me gavong chwala na gavong chwala ma ada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chwala ma ada. We are born. Yeah. Uta mojule tamalin. Mistak. Kwa yo yo mojule tamalin. Mistak. Kwa yo yo mojule tamalin. It is your thought you're reacting. Yeah. You know you're expressing your thought. That is that is as simple as that. It is not that a success or terry. Yeah. You know. But go back to the whole thing actor creativity technique observation whatever. Mm. If anything that an actor has got to learn is that the most important thing that you have to do is observation. Yeah. O is the most important one. An mm. observation is outside you observe life outside you mm. Mm. and uh, internal life inside of you you observe how for instance if oh man kwa tileng so and from other people as well. Well. yeah but you observe other people mm. for the characters that you might portray you yeah, sure but you have to know this which is your body your instrument your instrument you know because it's a tool it's a tool that you are using and you've got to know it like a musician knows his instrument So you have to know your own instrument. Exactly, but I don't think that is how actors are being taught that you've got to understand this how it fun- fu- uh, functions. How it moves. You, you know, it, more even the in, in the in, you got to understand this body. Mm. Here's what happens sometimes with actors these days. You find an actor says, "Hey, you know, you've got to, uh, you know, I've got only two takes for you in in in, in this scene." Huh. A musician never says, "I got two takes for you mm. to play this song mm. and they will play their instrument like if it, when a person you know a piano player a uh, who we could we say uh, Andy Leonan mm. you know he knows his in, I mean that instrument like the back of his hand yeah. he can play it you know in the dark and all that and that's how as an actor you have to know your body mm. and uh, you've got to be able to replicate what you need to do within a scene and uh, if you observe how this body works and know where how to where to link things because when you observe how when you for instance when you know where you've got to, you've got to cry um Every emotion has got its rhythm of breath. Hmm. The only simple way that I can, you know, give it to you that you will understand it is when somebody has got to cry. And when Wow. That's it. Yeah. Just a play of breath. Sure. You know, bumps. That's <laughs> bad, man. Yeah. And that is how simple it is. And the thing about it is that the body has got an inbuilt sense of truth if i would use big english i would say the body has got an innate sense of truth you know look at this i'm still at the part of you crying i thought you were going to cry man <laughs> <laughs> like for real yeah, that right? was for real bro. yeah you know what i mean but it's all about breath mm. and the thing about it is that the body is amenable or even the mind is amenable to what you give it you know If for instance let me try and not be naughty um you have an acrimonious breakup or fight with somebody and like it was like really like you were throwing the fork fork yes, yes. whatever and it was like yes yes this carnage yes this I'm suffering no bona lo if you know you are that and it, What happens is you don't see them for over a year that person the next time you see them usen and please your shayala and that is basically because you associate them your body remembers mm. you know before you know how you know we say ipodi and it in we say mapodi before you even know before you know we say ipodi go to yini you know what it feels like my we say ipodi you know what i mean you can see thighs or a naked woman you won't have any reaction to it but once you know your body remembers the feeling exactly yeah. so now what 
you as an actor now you've got to train your body to remember these sensations oh, okay. oh brilliant you got to teach it so that when you want the sensation this is what you do when you want the sensation <clears throat> this is what you do that's insane i know <laughs> sure. i know you know i know i mean people don't look at acting in this manner yeah. it is just that it's just acting as far as i'm concerned it can be taught Hey, you are dangerous. I'm <laughs> sure you do this like during fights and stuff. Yeah. We don't want to talk to a woman and like, it's time to cry now. Let's cry. You probably do that. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, know. I, mean, I mean, I mean, but you know, I mean, you guys, you know. <laughs> you guys, you know. I mean, I mean, how many times? I mean, they always, they always say that men don't cry. Yeah. They, That's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not true. Right? When you are caught. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta whip out the tears. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let me know. Yeah. I do not. I don't know. Baby. I don't know her. I don't know her. But maybe you can leave this. Maybe you can leave. <laughs> no, baby, please, baby, please. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's it. Jeez, that's insane. <laughs> so you're saying acting? You believe it can be taught to Bro, anyone? I think for me, acting is a science. It can be taught if somebody is will. Like for instance. Playing a piano, playing an instrument can be taught. Uh, whatever, everything can be taught. Mm. You know what I mean? So acting can be taught. That you have to be willing to go through the paces. Mm. That's all you, you, you the person needs. You know, and the thing about acting as well, you know, in fact, one uh, writer, there's a book that I once read. I mean, one of the things that I did. Um, as I was, you know, you know, getting into the profession yeah. and, and realizing yeah. that they are acting books and all that, I read a lot of books about acting, mm. you know, and uh, and basically I came to understand things that I were doing, I was doing naturally, you know, and uh, now they were explained in books and named, mm. you know, for instance, the whole, one thing that I was telling you about now is what they call sense memory, mm. because you have to remember uh, sensations. That from the memory yes you have to you have to remember sensations in order to you know to play certain but you have to rem <clears throat> i mean sometimes a person would say you know i in order for me to cry then i've got to go into my childhood yes, and what they trauma what are you, exactly mm. what are you remembering you remember that sensation of feeling of, of being of being left alone mm. and you were crying you are remembering that sensation that's all you're doing you know, it's nothing complicated, but you're going to the memory instead of understanding the technique. Mm. You know what I mean? And now somehow you'll go so far into the memory that it is, it is too painful now to even go back to. But as an actor, you've got to have the technique to execute on demand. Hmm. That's all it is. I, 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 read, I read a quote from uh, James Ngobo. Yes. He once said, uh, the minute you become a celebrity, mm -hmm. you cease to be an actor. What do you think about that? I think it's absolute nonsense. Mm. <laughs> Sorry to say that. Mm. <laughs> absolute nonsense. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it depends with the individual. If the individual went into into acting because they wanted to be known. Yeah. You know, and there are people who do that. Mm. Yeah, then course. to them, it was not because they were interested in the craft of acting. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. They just wanted to be known. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't get into acting because I wanted to be known. Yeah. You know, there were, I mean, there were certain things that fascinated me with acting. And I guess maybe it was actually standard three. I'm doing standard three. Our teacher gives us a poem recitation to go and memorize. And I, I don't think I understood that much English yes. because, you know, it was mother tongue, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and our teacher says, uh, uh, you know, go and memorize it. And I go and memorize it. And I go, Mama, but if you live yes, you know. And my mother looks at it. And my mother took me through the, page, the, the paces, mm. you know. And, uh, you know, and, you know, showing me what to do, you know. And just like, and the, the poem was all things bright and beautiful, mm. you know. And uh, she rehearsed me and rehearsed me. And then I think maybe after a day or two or after, you know, 
what, maybe a week, and then the teacher comes and says, okay, bana, eh, kemata rire lang, rastation, yeah. yeah, all things right and beautiful. Yeah. Who raised his hands? Yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> I got a yes, my girl. You know, I went there in the front of the class with my short pants, and you know, and I was cool. Never used to put on ties. Yeah. But my mother always made sure her name. Man, yeah. I've got to be the hot face. Yes, my yes. mother is the one who made me. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother's child. You know, and then I got there on stage, and I stand there, and I like. All things bright and beautiful. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. With actions and all. So if anything, I think even my performance or my performing streak mm. already started there. And I think my mother maybe probably put it in me. Mm. But another story is that when I was maybe four years old, yeah. my uncle, my younger, my mother's younger brother, every Saturdays, you know, he would take me to town, mm. you know. And uh, when we get, I mean, they kill my jiva, you know. Yeah. So I think this thing basically was just in me. Yeah, I think you At were four savant. Years old, you you know? were savant. I don't know what is that. It's complicated uh, terminology <laughs> for an old man like me. <laughs> but yeah, they know what you say in your peers. You know, but yeah. Savant, what is Savant? I might, I might, I might ask. No, I don't know. I just I came prepared to use big words. How? Okay, okay. you don't even know. Okay, all right. How? Okay, like, we'll leave it. There. Let me check, let me check. Okay. Oh, but I wonder what it means, man. I knew I needed to say it today. Somewhere I needed to cry in Savant. savant yeah. But anyway, so my uncle will take me to town, you know, and then he will take me, you know, like, you know, Igulitoro Zamakula, you know, they always have a speaker on the pavement. It's a person of learning, one with detailed knowledge in some specialized field. Okay, yeah. all right, okay. You see, I you think right, I, right? I'm, 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 I'm a savant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a savant. Hey, everybody out there. <laughs> I'm a savant. <laughs> But anyway, so my uncle takes me to town and then he will make sure that we pass by these Indian shops yes, where yes. the speaker end up playing the latest pop song. Yes, yes. Ah, dude. I'll get down. I'll get down on the pavement. Yeah. I'll get down on the pavement. People will throw money, you know, on the pavement. My uncle will collect. And my reward would be a packet of chips <laughs> and coke. <laughs> and the dude basically just pocketed everything. So they've been exploiting you. Hey, I've been, you know, I know exploitation, childhood exploitation. You know. Wow. So I think that is where, you know, I think it was just in my blood. Did you ever get like, um, uh, did they ever say no to you when you went to auditions? When you were coming I, up? I, I, I have. No I way, have. Brazil. I, I have. I, I tell you, I have. And it was after I had just done um, was Albert, mm, mm. you know. And was Albert was an international hit. Mm. And I mean, we did it at the market, and then we went to Canada. Wow. We went to Switzerland. So you're thinking you've made it? Uh, dude, yeah. <laughs> I've arrived. I've arrived. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And then, but I go to auditions. Yeah. I'm not cracking it. Which audition said no to you, Brazil? Uh, bro, I tell you, many, <gasps> many auditions. Wow. And I remember going out of one, you know, I was feeling like so small. This small. Yeah, yeah. And just thinking, <sighs> and you know, the thing about it is like when you walk out of the audition and you know you didn't get it. Yes, yes. They say, okay, thank you. We'll thank call you, you back. <laughs> I know that's just a thank you, just a thank you for coming. Yeah. And I just knew I didn't go, I didn't get it. Have you ever said no to any characters though? Oh, many times. For real. Yeah, no, I have. I have. Which character uh, did, uh, you say, did you say no to? <clears throat> Gosh. I think the the, the, the nose that that came many times was uh, when we didn't agree on money. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And um, but I've never uh, maybe. Um, was it was there ever one that I I can't remember anything distinct that I refused to play on the basis 
of maybe not agreeing with what the character was. Yeah. Oh. You know, for me, for instance, I will not say I will never play a gardener. Mm, mm, mm. No. Mm, mm. You know, if I don't play a gardener, as long as the story is well written. Have you ever said no to a character and then after saying no, you're like, yes, I should have said yes. No. No. No, mm. I haven't. I've never. Like one incident where I said no to a, a character or taking up a role was when I was offered, and I mean, I remember that distinctly because it disconnected with my life. Mm. I said no to doing Tempest, mm. and it was with a director I worked with in London. Or, and also even in South Africa, I did two Shakespeare plays with him. Mm. We did Titus Andronicus and I did uh, Othello. Mm. You know, Titus Andronicus, we did it at the market. And, uh, or, um, or Othello, I did it with the Royal Shakespeare Company in the UK. Mm. <clears throat> and I said no to uh, playing Caliban mm. in The Tempest. Mm. But I said no to that because... I knew, and it came after I'd just done uh, The Lion King yes. here at Monte Cassino. Mm. Mm. And I said no to it because I knew when I, if I had gone back to the UK, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't have come back. Oh, I see. And I had my boys that I wanted to raise, yeah. you know, and I, I had actually spent five years away from them. Mm. You know, I, when I left for five years, I left my daughter, she was 16. Mm. When I came back, she was 21. Jeez, yeah. And she be, she was a monster that I didn't understand. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, And yeah. you boys had already made her body count. <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful, you know. And by that time, which means was like, Dad, yes, come on. Yes, yes. You know, you can't, there's nothing you can tell me now. Yes. You know what I mean? And I realized that I lost my daughter and I didn't know how. Soapies, no characters in the soapies that you said no to? No, no. I didn't much get much, many offers because I did, uh, you know, yeah, generations. So long. You know, um, and um, I didn't do it for too long, you mm. know, actually. Mm. I played generations okay first season and second season and I think when we were going to the third season then it was going to be um, a, a sort of like a four daily a four days uh, you know series mm. in the in the week and um, <clears throat> it was when we were going to do the four days that I actually had a fallout mm. with uh, you know with the producers mm. you know so I didn't do that season, whatever, maybe season three yeah. and probably season four. four yeah. And then and people started saying, we want Archie back. Mm. So that's when I was called back. And when I, I was called back, it was 1999. Mm. You know, uh, I, was it 19? Yeah, 1999, March. You know, and uh, 2000, the end of 2000, I had a fallout and I left. Mm. So I basically did it for two years. Jeez, and it seems like you've been there for like... I know, yeah. you know, and I, I think that, you know, that is the, I don't know, the mystery of it all, mm. you know. So I basically like acted in Generations for like, wow, uh, three years. Was there ever a point in your career where like you had doubts about this acting thing? Because you know, it's like, it's not, nothing is certain. It's not yeah. guaranteed. You can have work one season I, find, I never in fact this is what happened 81 worked with gibson gibson um for uh, the whole of 81 and then 80, 1982 83 was the beginning of tv2 and tv3 mm. and because now i was very bc black consciousness and growing in natural also pac you know <clears throat> So when the whole thing of uh, doing TV2 and TV3, I was like, ah, I'm not working with the system. Yes, 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 yes. yes. To work with I don't want to be captured. I don't want to be captured. So basically what I did for, the, for two years, then I, I worked as a clerk. I worked at Hyperama. What? Yo. Now turned hyper checkers. <laughs> I was super, I was a, I was a order clerk, <laughs> <laughs> you know, working in the warehouse, dealing with orders and, and is it still and, there that park? It, in, in Santon? Yeah, it is called Hyper Checkers now. Oh, is it? Yeah, That's you know when crazy. when in fact I actually Barking inhaled the dust <laughs> of the making of Santon <laughs> seeds <Yeah. laughs> because I went there. Hyper was opening. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how the, you know I got that job in what in. 80, I think late 82. Yeah. 
you know and then um that's yeah, the only other jobs you did that's the only jo- other job that i did oh, you know as a, as a yeah, yeah apart from acting yeah. as an order clerk and then then 85 came the opportunity uh, of was albert mm. and the guy there's a guy brad dixie ah that's my bro, dixon yeah. malele yeah. dixon malele came to my house one day on a sunday and uh, i was just basically you know washing my clothes yeah you know preparing the, you know for the for the week and he said hey dude man hey we we're doing was albert again you know mbongeni ngema and pesim to are leaving it and but the place still in demand oh, so come and audition oh. you know and i went and auditioned and they took me and another day but we heard that you say you work mm. you know and i said when are the rehearsal starting and they said monday i said monday i'll be here yeah. on monday instead of going to work i went to rehearsals <laughs> and the rest is history. yeah the rest is history wow mm-hmm. let, let, let's forward track to 2021 right yes um what's your views on the performance protection bill that um the president doesn't want to sign how do you think it impacts actors you know i haven't read that a uh, performance um protection bill. protection bill mm. you know to the fullest mm. but i think one thing that i can say is that i think as actors we really need to be looked also as part of labor mm. because that is you know you know we're selling our services and uh, basically have all that is you know all the protection mm. that workers have you know like you know we should have uif we should you know all the, you know all these things i mean and also the other thing is that we are actually highly taxed mm. because you know i mean freelancers bakshangani yeah 25% yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know what i mean and as an actor you're freelance you know and and <clears throat> and we don't have security as a result of that 100%. so at the end of the day we need to get all the benefits that workers get because it is work mm. you know we may be play but it is work mm. you know and we need the same protection that workers have and royalties what's what's the how don't does royalties ask, work don't don't ask me about that i've never I, i can never tell you that i know a cent of royalties what i tell from you from all your work from all my work i mean they still play at chum rock or they used to on encore oh, or whatever yeah. yeah you get none I, of that I, I, wow. i don't remember even a cent of that That's so if there's robbery. a lawyer out there you want to be famous <laughs> take on my case <laughs> <laughs> and, and you mm. know what i've seen is like whenever someone in the industry speaks out about their grievances yeah. you know mm-hmm. they always get backlash from from the masses yeah so i'm like why don't you just start your own company yeah what's your take on that look money you know i I mean sometimes people you know we always try to there are people who are workers there are people who all they have to do is tata bogies and that is just that Mm. you know what i mean Mm. and uh, and uh, i mean i've been you know even challenged a lot but but, man man, you've been long in the industry man i mean why don't you start a production house that's Mm. it doesn't interest Mm. me Mm. you know and i've actually yeah but i think now because i think i just i I have stories that i want Mm. to tell Mm. and i think i have amassed enough experience as far as acting is concerned and also when i was in the uk i did a, a masters in screenwriting mm. so i know the craft of writing so you know now i think i'm ready mm. and i'm nice and settled and i'm no longer you know whatever you know excited by these other things now actually what i want to do is pass on the baton mm. you know what i mean yeah now i have to and i think basically as well i want to tell the stories that i want to tell mm. not the stories that the environment wants mm. you know and at the present moment what are, what are those stories that you want to tell bro uh, we have to tell stories for instance that shows that as a black person it is not all about crime yeah there is more to us yeah. mm. than being you know telling these stories of where we are involved in crime and uh, thing and again it is all because that as a nation you know being black people what apartheid and colonialism did has actually relegated us to the lowest rung mm. of the human species mm. you know and uh, we come from a history of intellectual giants hmm. If you go into the 18th 
uh, century, you will come across intellectuals like Hobusani, Toya, um, um, Tio Soga, uh, Hobusani, you know, those are the intellectuals of the 18th, 19th, the 19th century, century yeah. intellectuals that we had. And uh, you grow now. You know, you have your Eskiam Pathelis. You, 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 I mean, not, I mean, not even now, it is a generation. Is it a gener it's not even a generation, it's my father's generation. Mm. You know, where Eskiam Pathela, you have the Kentembers. I'm doing a play now uh, with the uh, UP. Uh, and this play is based on Bloke Mudisan, who was a journalist in the 50s for drum. Um, and it is based on him and uh, Langston Hughes. Mm. They were pen pals, you know, and they ended up meeting in London and then also in the US. True story. True story. Jeez, do you, you know, know about these stories? No, no, you no, don't no. know about these. No, you see, no, like, no, these bro. are the stories that we really need to capture. Yeah. Mm. You know, because we actually, you know, young people growing up today, you know, and when you look at uh, images, even of my generation, when you look at them on TV, you see it maybe through politicians. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't see, uh, at best, you know, many men of state outside politics mm. who are men of a particular character, you know. And I can say to you now, you can remember we had the Vusipi Kolis. We, I mean, we've had, you know, people who are legal giants. But now, for instance, like, you know, oh yeah, Tembeka, mm. uh, Nukai you know what I mean? We have lawyers like that. We have the Tulima Donzelas. Mm. You know what I mean? So we've got people of high intellect, mm. you know, but we're not telling stories that represents that high intellect. Mm. You know, we are playing the stories of the, uh, that are being written and that everybody sees uh, of ordinary black people who are just here, mm. you know, and who don't exude. When you watch all these other television series, you watch FBI, you see the complicated, you watch C S C S I, you see characters that are, you watch, uh, what is it, The Fix. Mm. It was it The, the, the fixer. fixer. You know what I mean? Mm. Did, did you see? They, I mean, they play, even if they, they use, it's crime stories, but you, you it's people of high intellect. Mm. You see the White House, you see a mm. black woman in the White House, I was playing, you know, and we need to tell stories of that kind of sophistication. Right. And then basically with the with the truth commission, whatever. Hey man, a story <laughs> for days. For days. <laughs> <laughs> and characters. Yeah. Some of them of this high intellect. Mm. You know what I mean? And now you see them how basically they can be, you know, crooked. Mm. <laughs> Smash and crack with treasure. Yeah, yeah. So, how would you like to see things change then? Well, I think you know, um, gosh, it's, it's, it's such a, a, a big, 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 yeah. big, big question. Yeah, you know, we, I think, as black people, Fana, we have to really take. Uh, this whole situation, I think, by the balls. Yes. And uh, one thing that we have been, I think, as black people, we have been suckers for comfort mm. and not caring how we get it. Mm. And that is why people were bought the way they were bought mm. by the Guptas. And that is a shame. Mm. You know, I mean, when you see a man of dignity and you see him reduced now when they're sitting there and they're like, but mm. you know, and this is a man who is a father mm. to a child, but he allowed himself to be bought only mm. for what? For comfort. Mm. And look at where the nation is at as a result of that. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, I don't care. They can, you know, but if we look at what Amapunu left when we got into power and the infrastructure that they left, mm. you know what I mean? And we have to be honest about mm. that and look at how that infrastructure has depleted, has depleted and we can't even maintain it. Mm. And that is sad. And that load is the shading. legacy. Load shading on all those things. But that is the sad indictment that we are living for our children. How are the politicians different back then to these ones now? Look, I mean, I think, the, I mean, we never had politicians. The politicians that were there were jailed. 
Okay. You know, when we were growing up, yes. you know, there were just the Mandelas yeah. and the Bikos got killed. And yeah. now we actually saying if maybe if Biko was alive or maybe if Chris Hani was alive and, all, you know, all that. Or if maybe Oliver Tambo and all that. And we can't live on that. We are sold out by the people who are leading us now. You know what I mean? And uh, you look, I mean, I mean, I say when I grew up I mean, in Atridgeville, um, in fact, 16, I was, I mean, 75, 76, I was in, 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 in Soweto. Sure. And then I went back to Atridgeville in 77. Mm. And when I went, I mean, and that is when Libo, I mean, well, Ali, I don't know, Ulo Kozan my son's daughter who you working with mm. you know and, and we were playing basketball mm. and uh, what happened was there's atridgeville hall the municipality that was under apartheid at that time turned that hall into a basketball court yeah and there was a dry cleaner that was uh, out of business and they took the that, that dry cleaner was turned into a recreation center hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I grew up knowing that I can exhaust or whatever my energy as a young man doing something. Mm. I used to play tennis like a mean tennis, mm. uh, table tennis. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, and, you know, young people, when you are young, you, ex you are explorative. Mm. You know what I mean? Curious. And curious and you've got energy that mm. you can use. Mm. I played basketball, played soccer, played whatever, table tennis, and a team was also laying in the background at, the, at church, you know, we were doing plays and all that. And that is where it was also even... Um, but again, uh, groomed, mm. you know what I mean? And I think one of the things that groomed it, I was also a daughter, mm. let's say Presbyterian, mm. you know what I mean? And preaching, man, that's acting at its best. Wow. Preaching. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the best actor? Pastors. Of the, of the famous pastors. Pastors. I mean, I, I don't know, I haven't, you know, but watch any pastor, even the lowest rank pastor. <laughs> When they're preaching, I was <laughs> tabula ba. Ba so good tabula, and they hold an audience. You know la. It's a one man show. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> literally. It's a one man show. It's a performance. Mm. You know, it's performance to at its tea. highest degree, never before dreamed of. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, also one of the things that actually just gave me that was being a daughter and out now with now we are Shumail Alapayana, we are Shumail and all that. And that gives you confidence. And actually, you know, if anything that maybe young people should do, they should go to church. Hmm. Because church helps you in one thing. It helps you to gain your confidence. Hmm. Look at somebody who goes, no, I mean, I've just accepted Jesus and whatever. And that person, uh, in fact, <laughs> acting. <laughs> Don't get me stuck. <laughs> acting hmm. and Christianity. As Ambaganj. No ways. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> How? Acting. How? In Christianity. I mean, I've just explained the past, but, yes, yes. you know, I'll, 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 I'll break it down. Okay, cool. I'll break it down. As a Christian, in order to be a Christian, what do you have to do? First, you have to accept Jesus, Jesus. Christ yeah. as your Savior. 100%. And then after accepting Jesus as your Savior, what do you do? You read there, Bible. The Bible. Scriptures. Mm. And scriptures is, script comes from scripture. Mm. You read the scriptures. Mm, that's the scripture. And after reading the scriptures, what do you do? You act. live mm. and act and according act to the, to the scripture. scripture. Whoa! So as an actor, what do you do? You accept the part. And after that, you do what? You read the scripture and after reading the scripture what do you do you live according to the scripture i told myself i wasn't gonna swear in this episode because we're chilling with that <laughs> yeah, yeah. but uh, fuck me let it out fuck me <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy no You're right you see like that is why i say one thing that is what we tend to do we like to play with high, with high convoluted words and phrasings and whereas things are just simple, mm. they're just 
there they are on the nose but here's the the the, the trick simple things are very complex in their making hmm. look at mace yeah. <clears throat> he makes things look simple simple yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but when you look at the work that he has put in to master those kicks those whatever it's complex it's complex sure you know what i mean and even compounds in science and whatever the lithiums and whatever in order to understand them they get to be broken down into elements com- elements. carbons elements mm. and you know That's it's right. like whatever water is mm. h2o yeah. whatever and that is how these complex uh, compound things are actually made simple So that is why I say for me what I've managed to do is even just make acting simple. Sure. Rather than make it no 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 you 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 know no come on come on uh, come on MacGyver mm. just get into character man mm. you know just really mm. get into character man I mean, just get into character what do I mean? Mm. I don't know. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Are you a Christian? I am. I, that's why I, I mean I grew up in the church. I was in uh, Tengilberging like being it You know I mean you know nothing in the I mean whistle is actually what is it this red whatever Presbyterian is white jackets. Mm. So being it totan in the you look into all punch Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, you know yeah. And you don't practice uh, African, no, but I, yeah? You don't practice African um Like what do you call umzos? Uh, umzos. Yeah, like umzos. Look, man. I, I, you know, actually, for me, even like the whole thing of Christianity and whatever, it's you know. In fact, when actors say, "I'm getting to character," almost it's like, "Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Father." That's you know, you're making it esoteric. Mm. But the thing is, people keep looking up. When they should be looking in. Mm. 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 I don't know if you answer the question. So you don't Matlosi. I don't. But basically, even Matlosis <laughs> and all those things, because all you do when, in fact, here's the best advice that I was given by one great actor, South African actor, my predecessor, Sam Williams. Sam Williams gave me two advices when as a young man getting to know him and even you know doing nasty nice things and you know doing body counts and I did body counts with him. I did body you counts. You love body counts, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But anyway, um anyway, who's this guy? Sam Williams said to me one time in giving me a word of advice as a young upcoming actor and he said, "You know what, son? Whoever you are, whatever you are wherever you are there you are oh wow so basically simply stated you can never be higher or lower than yourself hmm. you're just there hmm. you know and then he said to me and remember one thing a man in prayer never stumbles and falls When in prayer what do you do? You pray. You go down on your knees. Mm. And then when you're on your knees try walking to the door will you stumble? No. You'll never stumble. And but what you know the the explanation towards this that metaphor is that when you're humbling yourself you can never fall too hard. Oof, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. You you, yes. you 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 know what I mean. But when you are like la mm. maua, mm. you know what I mean. Yeah, you know. And most successful people <clears throat> have the same humility. same thing, mm. you know. So now this here's how I understand the prayer, prayer and upatha. Mm. For me, they are the same thing. Okay, they are the same thing. Upatha, ula, and oje a. Bagabani, mm. Bagabani. Mm. Again, uh, bo, ubumalume, mm. bubani, oh, you know, you mm. And you are humbling yourself. Mm. And even when you go into prayer, with Almighty Father, mm. oh God, mm. please, you, you think. But here's what we tend to do with prayer. Prayer is not something that should actually be divine intervention as far as I'm concerned. 
Prayer is you talking to yourself, looking at what you are doing and making a change as you are talking and talking to yourself. Yes, I do this and yes, I'm born to learn. I'm so funny, changing. I'm so funny. 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 I don't have to expect God to forgive me for an action that I've done. I have to look into it. And say, no, 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 this is nonsense. I've got to change. Hmm. That's it. So now people use all these things to not want to take responsibility for their actions. Mm. And that's what you did with your, your first marriage, no? First marriage, yes. Mm. To, uh, what is it that you want to know about my first marriage? No, 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 I can't you were just bringing it up. I'm like, actually, that's what you did because you, you took responsibility. For no, it was not even first marriage, being such old, mm. you know, at that time. Mm. I was 24 years old. Yeah. You know. You got married, ne? No, I, I, I didn't get married. I only got married, man. The first marriage was, I, I was already in my 40s. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest was just body cream. <laughs> <laughs> You need to use your language. <laughs> See, Java. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But um, and then you see, like one one of the things, God, nice as far as I'm concerned, is not up there. God is your conscience. Huh. For me, God is your conscience, and you've got to be able to relate to you. He's not living up there. He's with you, mm. and I think that is why, even with Sam Williams, wherever you are. Whoever you are, whatever you are, there you are. God is not up there. And they say we are created in his image. What is his image? Huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. What is his image? So it's all the, for me, it, you know, it's all like, just come on, man. Let's stop uh, BSing. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Let's stop BSing. Let's just get to the, to the, if ever you've done wrong, don't say I need prayer in order to, to you know, to change a place in Galum Tanda Zung Tanda Zelene. No. Acknowledge good. No. I messed up here. Mm. I effed up big time. Mm. And now I've got to change my ways. Mm. You know what I mean? And the people hide behind this you know, praying and all that and blaming things. I mean, Tina, we are even blaming our ancestors. Mm. In fact, there's this clip where you say black people are the only one who their ancestors have done them wrong. Mm. And look at the ancestors of the white people, mm. you know, the ancestors of the white, I mean, the Rothschilds and whatever, and, you know, the Quakers and whatever, you know, and Tina, Tina, we are blaming them. Vulele na masango, pangisa ka bantu. No, who was pangisa ka bantu? You guys are laughing at serious. This is serious. <laughs> You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. and that's why you were able to be vocal about your indiscretions on a personal level. You know, that's why it. That, that's that's all it is. But the other thing is that I'm doing that for my boys. You okay? You know, um, my first child, my my, my eldest son, he passed away on uh, 2011. Yeah. Died in a car accident. At 19, my daughter tells me, "Hore, hey, daddy." Do you, um, do you know that Mkolisi has got four girlfriends? Sure. He's doing the body count. <laughs> hey, he's rocking. <laughs> like father, like son. And I said, ooh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. yeah. You know, and I looked at him, and I called him. I said, hey, dude. I'm telling you, You know. You know, so what number you're ready for? Hey. I said, oh, yours, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You know. So, uh, just, it, let, let me do this, son. Let me, I'm going to, you know, you guys, you break it down. Yes. But no, let me break it down. For yeah. You. I said, you know, when I was dating your mother, I did it so and so, 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 I did it so and so. I can't even remember. Yeah. And then came your sister's mother. And when I was dating your sister's mother, I did it so and so, I did it so and so, I did it so and so, then so and so. Others I can't even remember. Mm. And then came your other brothers, and I had four children by that time. Yes. You know. 
And I said, and when, you know, I dated your other brother's mother, I, when I dated your mother's brother, I dated so-and-so, I dated, you saw me so-and-so, I dated, you saw me so-and-so. You know, like now he's older, he sees this. Yes. Thing. And came your youngest brother's mother. And when I was dating, I dated so-and-so, you saw me so-and-so, you, you saw me so-and-so. I said, you know one thing, son, one thing that they don't tell you about this kind of behavior is that it is addictive. Mm. Sex in itself is addictive. Highly, mm. highly. But tell me here, because he came to live up to live with me at the that age of. That came from the soul. Did you, hear that? you know, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, what is it? At the, uh, he came to live with me at the age of thirteen, yeah. and um, all that time he was living with his mother. You know, and why I also why I wanted him to come because I remember when I think I was hitting the age of thirteen. I suffered some kind of identity crisis sure. because even though my stepfather was the best, man, yeah, well, yeah. I don't want to lie. 100%. That man, like I say, I was the best well-dressed child. Yeah. Hence, I was always the mm, groom. Mm, you know mm. what I mean? So he looked after me, mm. you know. But I suffered an identity crisis because what would happen is I would look at my siblings and look at him and uh, I, mm. you know, Minang mm. and I would look at my friends, and I look at them with their fathers by a fan, minang fana no ban. So that we were doing lie at the back of my mind, and mm. I didn't want my son to go through that. Okay. So that is why I said at the age of thirteen I wanted, you know, him closer. Mm. But I realize it doesn't take that. It mm. takes actually being part of the child's life. Mm. But that is another the story, the story yeah. for uh, for another day. Mm. And then, so, <clears throat> where, where was I going with this? So when he, you know, he came to, oh yeah, Fuck he, he, yeah he, you know, <laughs> no, and then I said to him, okay, you know, now tell me, when you were growing up, didn't you wish that I was always there? Mm. Tears welled up in his eyes. For real. And I said, you see? Mm. And I thought I was being better than my father by being there and supporting you. Mm. It takes more than money to raise a child. Mm. You have to be there. Mm. You know Present. what I mean? Present. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that is where, I mean, like, that's how even that kind of conversation went. Mm. You know, and because I could have looked at him, my Tibang Jela Gutuna Machere Vangada Badaba Winja. With cock. But Eliza went ababa. You know, but I realized because already at that time I had four kids. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, which means there was something wrong there. And there is, guys, we've got to really understand that. This thing of making babies and leaving them, it's just not all. Mm. We got to do better. Mm. You know what I mean? Was it a thing back then? Like, yeah. uh, it was a thing then. It was a thing, but it's yeah. still a thing now. Yeah, there were no condoms back then, yeah. It, but even, even now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you don't, don't, don't try to play my, 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 my generations. <laughs> you have the condoms, but you're not using them. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but you, 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 you see what I mean? And um, But the thing, guys, Fana, we have to realize, and we've got to tell each other out, this thing of living children, it is not on. Mm. And, um, I know, and I know, you know, I mean, ask me about baby, mom, baby mama drama. Mm. Ah, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a, a, mag, a magnum opus. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? But here's another thing. Understood, you've got to understand what baby mama drama is. Mm. Baby mama drama, it is not because I know Usang phone. Yes, yes, she yes. still wants me. Yes. She still wants me. It's more than that. When this woman bears this child. Yes. And after that, when I, as a man, you don't undergo, undergo any changes. 100%. You know what I mean? She undergoes changes. Her body now, Physical. even I'm a stretch marks mm. and all that. Who do you think now must actually now go and nest those stretch marks? Mm. Who must feel loving on those stretch marks mm. that were brought in by, by you. you? You created that. You created that. And so what it calls for is that think twice before you dispense your sperm. Mm. If ever, for instance, you're not going to live with this person, you know, 
at best then use the condom and protect your sperm mm. and when you are ready and say now i want that maybe my sperm should germinate there mm. you know then you know and and i will go with this to the end mm. you know what i mean the baby mama drama is caused by a person who you left and they like unshela mm. ban You know, I'm so fortunate. I've never had baby mama drama. Yeah, you haven't because mm. you haven't. You have, have you got a baby? Yeah. And you and are you there? Yeah, I'm still. Are you there. With, with the mother? Yeah. Okay. Are you I'm, not lying? No, no, no. I'm, what did you call it? Germinating my sperm there. Yeah. What did he say? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and now you're there. You're saying, "Hey, I'm with you yeah. to you know to the end." Do you have baby mama drama? So, uh, no, no. We yeah, I've got a baby this. mama. Yeah. But we no drama. Are you sure? <laughs> Yeah, no trouble. And then are you still together or you doing it? No, not together. She's un- she's really understanding. Uh she, she must you must ask her. She <laughs> is. You must really ask her. I think her. she is. You know, unless if ever she's the one who left you. That's another We thing. left one another. <laughs> nah. No. No. You know what I mean? Me. But but the, 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 and you know that is the thing. Yeah. Because when if ever the woman is the one who decided to leave you, mm. they will never give you baby mama drama. Mm, yes. If they decided to say, Mm-mm, it's over. not on. Mm. And you come, they did okay. You can have your child, mm. and they stand for. What do you think about GBV, man? Because it's very rife right now. Eish. What do you think causes it? Where, what are we doing as men? GBV. We really have got to be open about discussing it. Okay. And I know I'm going to be controversial, but mm. if you want to take me on, hey, I'm here. Yeah. We have got to be able to discuss GBV in its different dimensions. Mm. There is gender-based violence that is, you know, if ever you are taking, you know, a lesbian and you whatever that's gender based violence and that is i don't know what they call it yeah you know what i mean or even for instance uhlangana ne cherry we rape ungayaz you know that is gender based violence 100% yeah. you know what i mean mm. but when you get into relationships mm. and which is inter partner violence that's a different ball game mm. and i think we're not having a very frank conversation mm. about that mm. because the dynamics of relationships have ways that leads to all kinds of things but here's the thing men suffer the consequences because their actions are visual okay okay because when they react out of the hurt they cause harm mm. that is visible mm, 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 mm. and here's one thing that i say a couple will never sit having a good time hi baby yes. you oh, baby, i love you yes 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 and, so and then you brush the thighs and start each other <laughs> You know, and they, you know they do all those yeah, kind of things. Yeah. And then while they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, say, "Hey, baby man, you know, you know the way, oh, the way you make me feel so good, baby. Oh, I want to kick you right now. Hey. Let me just. It doesn't happen that way. No, 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 no never, 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 never. So, can we now, when we discuss that kind of space, get into the nitty gritties of the elements, the elements that what is it that really happened? But this is what I will say. after saying all that as if like i'm condoning gender based violence mm. uh, there is a anecdote that i like telling when i begin my talk you know when i talk about gender based violence yeah. and this came at a, it was the opening of coming i wrote a play that dealt with toxic masculinity in 1998 okay you know what i mean so that is why this thing is not new to me yes you yes. know what i mean you know men we might we must do that no i i i i have been you know i reflected personally on myself for 14 years from 1984 up until 1980 which was just a solitary journey sure you know and then when i met with these guys who wanted to do a play then i've got other men to interrogate there and unpack 
the subject. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I went to a point where I translated toxic masculinity to the point that I remember one time when I looked at the play, you know, having created it, I walked out of the theater with my head bowed hmm. because it spoke to me wow. as if I didn't write it. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm. because I think in it, elements of me were almost... You know, I, it, it, the play was peppered with elements of me, but elements of others, but, and it hit home to me. Mm. You know what I mean? So I had, you know, basically like traveled that journey. Um, but if there's one thing that we really have got to understand and come to terms with is that as men, oh yeah, I was going to the story, um, why coming, and mm. then there was the opening at, uh, at, uh, in Alexander. Mm. Uh, and I did it with a young men's, a young men's program, which was with ADAPT mm. in Alexander. Mm. Uh, and at the opening of it, uh, one of the board members spoke. And he told this anecdote, it's not mine. Mm. He told this anecdote and it stayed in my mind in 90, since from 1988. And he tells the story, and I've had bastardized versions of yeah. it, you know, being turned into a Christian. But this uh, a, a gentleman said there was a carpenter, a carpenter working in his workshop. And he had a seven-year-old boy. And as he's working, the boy keeps saying, Papa, what is this? Papa, papa, you know, and he's distracting the old man from working. Now, in the workshop, there was a map of the world on the wall. Hmm. So the father, you know, ripped it off the wall throw it into pieces, throw it, in, threw it on the floor, got cello tape and said to the boy, put this, you know, map together, together yeah. you know, and that kept the boy busy mm. and the old man could continue, working. you know, to working and doing mm. his thing. And after a while, you know, the young boy came and said, Papa, look, I have put it together. Mm. Now, behind the map of the world, there is a man's head. Mm. And the moral of the story is, if man can get his head together, the world would be a better place to be. Ooh. Damn! I see why you love him, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You know what I mean? So now, we sure. guys, we guys, we like to call ourselves what? Heads of our household. Mm. You know, even But now, let's Let's not look at this metaphoric and go to the physiological makeup of the head. You know, on the head, what do you find? Eyes mm. for vision. On the head, what do you find? Nose mm. to breathe oxygen into the body to keep it alive. In the body, on the head, what do you find? Ears to hear danger and maybe all the other nice things in the mm. world. You know, in the head, what do you have? You have the mouth, you know, to speak, communicate, mm. and then feed mm. the body. Mm. Mm. And then there is this six gram gray matter inside the skull, which is connected to all the nerves and this, you know, of your body, you know. And when you have to react, and once you get brain damaged, you can't move. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? Mm. There is a heart transplant, liver transplant, whatever transplant, pancreas, whatever. You know, eyes can be removed and eyes can be, ears can be made. There, there is a prosthetic. Have you ever have seen somebody living with a prosthetic head? Mm. No. So, if you are the head of the household, you are the most important part of that household and the head regulates the body hmm. you know what i mean hmm. when i feel an itch it sends a bit take, take the hand it can be on my yeah, 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 yeah. you know there is that it it and you know it's taking care of this if the ubamba love yeah she said remove hmm. it you know there's that but when your nerve centers and the brain is dead you'll put your hand there hmm. and a gush of pale hmm. you know what i mean hmm. so which means as a man, if you're the head of your household, all the care that the, the body needs, you must be there unapologetically uh, without any excuses. And uh, the thing you go to sometimes as men, we actually end up getting, but uh, no, but mm. yes, you, you 
sad part is you are a man mm. you cease to be muntu mm. one way or the other boy children have got to be trained to understand that they have a, we have a bet a bigger responsibility in this life mm. You know what I mean? And uh, this whole thing, yeah, how the men must must cry and, and all that. I'm as far as I'm, and I do cry a lot. Mm. Make no bones about it, I do cry. That's But uh, that's another thing. Ah, what a <laughs> damning word! <laughs> you know what a damning word! <laughs> you know. <laughs> But the whole thing, Yahore, now you must cry, 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 failure. Mm. You know, men must cry. Men, men, must, men must express themselves. Men express themselves. How do you get involved with them if they, they never express themselves? Mm. Because a man will come and express himself. Mm. You know what I mean? But what women don't want to accept is the fact that when you are there in the relationship, and then now, you know, bargain familiarity does what? Breeds contempt. Mm. You know, you get to a point on my baby's so day when I... When I'm going to the next one, Utule, we as Utule, I can just don't challenge on. And once they do that, what do you do? You stop expressing yourself. Mm. You stop communicating. Mm. And the next thing they want you to communicate, Nkulma, now why don't you answer me? Mm. What is the point of answering you when you have already told me that there's nothing you're not you're going to take from mm. me? So those are the dynamics that we don't realize. Mm. And I do refuse that men don't express themselves. Mm. You know, even at the time when I was basically abusive to my girlfriend, it was not because I'm not expressing myself. Mm. I was. You know, but my girlfriend was quick with the tongue, mm. was quick with his mouth. And now one thing that people don't realize is that I do have a stammer. You know, you yeah. know that I do stammer a little bit. Mm. I hide it well. But when I'm angry, oh man, It's, you, 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 you know, I'm like my father, yeah. you, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, when you have a stammer and you can't communicate, and that's when I used to lash out, and that's the introspection that I made, mm. and I realized, okay, this is when it happens. You know what I mean? And now when I would be, man, baby, but well, well, then I would go mm. and mm. come back maybe the following day. I said, mm. baby, now I'm going to go. You know, when I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And she will come. I mean, I'll say one thing, she comes with five, and I try to deal with the first one. Oh. She give me another ten. And the frustration, you're not actually getting through to this person because they don't want to hear you, and they're just bringing problems, and you are frustrated, and then that's when you unleash. Is it true she burned two of your cars? Yeah. Is it true she burned two? Oh, yes, ma. Oh, no, no, she burned only one. She tried to burn one. That's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. But, you know, but, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but, you know, she was trying to express whatever she, she was, was trying, trying to get. And yeah. so then it was like, you must have done something to her. <laughs> but, okay, uh, I know I never did anything. I just wanted to go. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And that is the thing that I tell you that, for instance, um, you know, even with the baby mama drama. Yeah. You know, baby mama drama, it is because you left the mother. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And now here she was, and I'm married to her, and I decide, hey, I want out. I'm mm. done with this. Mm. Mm. You know, and mm. she was actually blocking me from leaving. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm. And you can imagine that now, after she burned the car, what, do, what, do, what would I have done? Mm. I mean, you, you, yeah. you, you touch a man's car, you mm. know, it's like, yeah, when? Mm. You know what I mean, and that and I should have been violent if ever maybe that was the case that I am still I was still violent. I'm not, yeah. and I think I want to make this properly. You know, I want to state this at a categorically because I'm still kind of like being accused mm. that you know somehow, and I'm being talked about in boardrooms. Mm. You know, where people say, "Oh no, no, he's a perp." Mm. No, 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 I'm not. Mm. I've redeemed myself mm. and I've redeemed myself more than even the, all many of the feminists who are actually sitting in those boardrooms and, and barking, hey, I'm getting angry. Ne? No, no, no. I know you haven't started yet. No, no, no. But yeah, you know, it gets to me because mm. this, I mean, I've been spoken about in boardrooms also because of an incident that I relapsed in 2000. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I relapsed and since 2000 up until now, I've never relapsed. Mm. And uh, since 2024 up until To, uh, working that 2000, I hadn't done that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So tell me, man. Mm. You know, I mean, come on. I've mm. done my work and women like it. Oh, men must do the work. Men must do the work. I, I have I'm, done the work and I know for a fact that a lot of feminists have never done the work about their own behaviors, mm. about what their character is all about. Mm. I've done work on my character. Come challenge me anytime. And I'm, I'm saying, I'm, bring it on. Mm. You know what I mean? And that is the thing. I've done the work and I know. And if there's one thing men have got to learn, learn to regulate 
your temper when you are faced with that kind of a incident. Yeah. It is all about it takes self. Takes a true man to do that. You know, it takes about self-regulation. And women somehow will say horrible things to you to try and demean you. And maybe even the worst thing they will say, they will tell you that you even have got a small dick. Mm. You would ah, bro, take it on the chin. Mm. Or in fact, you are even not even good in bed. Take it on the chin and walk. See but what happens. We, but we happy right now, right? Yeah. You, we happy. Yo. Ah, I you. see you post. You post your women. Oh, ah, ganye mama. Ah, but at sixty plus. Yeah. Are you married now? No, we know. You know, we 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 we're working we, we, on we, it. We're working on it. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Ah, ganye mama. Yeah. In fact, hey man, hey, hey, uh, hey. It's just beautiful. It's dude, so, I, uh, dude, dude, no, dude. dude. We try this is fine. But what you want, dude? All I can say to you, Fana. I have met my life partner. Wow. wow. I have met at my so at 60, bro. You know, hey, uh, uh, she's what, 21, 20 years younger, younger than, than me. You, yeah, yeah. And basically life oh. worked on me for 40 years for her. Oh. And I think even to her, she just says, walk away. She's keeping you young, eh? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but all I know is I've with you. How do you meet her? How do you meet her? Nandi. How do you meet her? Uh, I don't tell the story now. Yeah. I, I'll save it for later. <laughs> I don't want to tell the story now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah you know. But was it hard to fall uh, in love with, with, with your past experience, you know, of marriage? And it stuff? wasn't, you know, even after, you know, Vanna, there's one thing that, I, and I tell guys, you, you really have got to know yourselves. Guys have got to, you got, you got to know yourself. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, the, the marriage was my second marriage with, mm. you know, with the other lady mm. who burnt my car. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, my first marriage was in the UK. Mm. You know, uh, I married a British Caribbean lady. Mm. And um, three months into our marriage, we had a, we had a fallout. And the fallout was caused by the fact that she said to me, you married me for a British passport. Mm, mm. Huh. Ish. You know, when somebody says that, you know, and it was at the height of an argument, and, you know, it took my breath away. And I remember just looking at her. And I had to come back and respond. Mm. And I said, you know what? When I married you, I married you because I love you. Mm. And I can live the rest of my life without you. Trying to prove that. Mm. I'll spend the rest of my life trying to prove that I married you because I love you. Mm. But to prove that I married you, that to prove that I didn't marry you for the British passport, that is going to be hard to prove. Mm. But the only way that I can prove it is that I'm going to step out of the marriage. Mm. That will show you. That, that will prove you. Mm. Because in order to get a British passport, you have to be married to, to a British citizen for two years. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? And if I was going to spend the two years trying to say in Tungila, I was going to have all this thing hanging over my head mm. all the time. Where is she now? I'm sure she regrets it. I don't know where she is. I haven't, uh, you know, haven't communicated with her since. Mm. But <clears throat> here was the thing as well. As I took that decision, I asked myself one question. What is the one thing that was going to compromise my decision? And you know what was this? What, what would it have been that when I'm separated, what I was going to do? A body count. <laughs> Straight back to the body count. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would do that. Yeah. And uh, what I did was, and because in, 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 the, in British law, that when you, 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 you want an annulment or to end mm. a marriage mm. that is still new and it was like three months old, mm. they had to give us a, a year's grace, Jeez. you know, before they would grant us the, the, mm. the divorce, mm. you know. And I decided to go celibate. Mm. I stopped the body count mm. 
for a year. Mm. That's a long time. It's a long time for a guy. Yeah, 365 days. It's 365 days. Mm. Maybe even more. You know what I mean? Because I told myself, until I get my divorce decree, I'm not going to have any woman around me. Mm. And because, you know, why, how or what? Here's the thing how guys, sometimes we get caught up. You decide to leave a girl. You d actually, you say, you know, it's like, yeah, we're done, we're done, we're mm. done. And then she walks on you with a new girl. Mm. And they go, yeah, that is why you left. You left me because you just wanted to go and do and go and do and go and do. Mm. You know what I mean? And then somehow that guilt trips you. Mm. You say, no, 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 that is not the case. That is not the case. And then a woman will say, but I still love you. Mm. Mm. It's a rap. Because once the woman says that, we are buyel. Yeah. Is it true your, your, your exes were harassing you when you announced that, you know, you're now in a... Yeah, there was a, there was a, there was a little harassment that, you know, was, was happening. Why did they want you back? You, you, you rock, no? I don't know. They can tell you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 rock her. Achimu rock her. Also that. <laughs> Oh, you, guys, man. you guys are naughty. <laughs> Before you, guys, you go, man, yeah, yeah. I want to play a game with you. It's called Break Down uh, the Most Iconic Characters You've Ever Had. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, give you a character and then just break it down for us. Like, you know, how it came about and what was special about this character. Because I think you've got so many characters that people recognize you for. Yes, you know? yes. We'll start with Mufasa. Mufasa came up in a very street twisted way. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lebo M. Yes, yes. And uh, I think Brad Duma. He's yes. on his seventh wife now. Ah, that must one. catch up. Ah, that one. I know. <laughs> ah, but no, no, no. I, I'm not in competition with him. <laughs> you know, what I've got, I got for life. I know, <laughs> I like that. I like that. I tell you guys. <laughs> you know, and then basically maybe I can consider. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, Lebo is holding auditions. Uh, you know, Market Theatre, there's a place, Skippies. Yeah. You know, they're holding auditions there. And uh, I'm passing, and I hear what you know they are there. You know, they are holding auditions. So, uh, and I just did a movie where Lebo wrote music for. Mm. Excuse me. Um, with the, the some, uh, uh, there are two Vanessa Williams, but the, the, the darker version of Vanessa Williams. So, I decide to go in today, you know, and when I walk into the, I say, ah, come on guys, audition me playfully, you know, yes. you know, all right, at the end of a rainbow, oh. you'll, f and the Lebu says, no, 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 you must read for me, you mm. must read for me, and then Lebu gave me the script, gave me the city, go, you know, read this part, and then, you know, listen to this song, and then come back maybe after doing it, and I went back, I think after two, three days, you know, did the audition, you know, acting wise, York. and uh, whatever, and then, hey, apparently, when I as, I as I walked out of Kipis, mm. they were on the phone to New York. Mm. We found Mufasa. Wow, you know what I mean. And that's how the, you know that, 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 that that's how it came about. And but also what Lebu, um, you know, or do, Braduma, I think it was Braduma who told me or Lebu. And they said that the, the the guy who was the director, he said, I have never seen an actor who take notes the way that guy does mm. who listens the way that that, that that guy does and that is one thing even that is a lesson of life mm. you know what i mean i say that to, they say this to my children you know what i mean in life you constantly have to take direction mm. whether even cyril takes direction he's being given direction mm. by the somebody the they, well, i don't know mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but in life, you have to take direction from somebody. Mm. You know, you have, first and foremost, you take direction even as a baby. Mm. You get directed to the nipple mm. that you sucker. Mm. You get directed to the spoon mm. that feeds you. You know, you get direction all out your life. Even when you are a manager or even the CEO, you know what I mean? 
even sometimes I'm again maybe when you are the owner of yeah. your, of the company and you are the barking Bronson and whatever mm, Richard some Benson. Richard whatever and then somebody is going to say but uh, sir um, you know um, this and that and this and that and you know and you take direction even though mm. you are at the top. So in life you live on direction. My son, he's driving, uh, learning how to drive. Got at Lena's, you know, and we're going somewhere. He's, you know, working, practicing. We've got the GPS, and the GPS gives ten left here, ten right here, ten left here. You know, and it strikes me, how oh, this guy is taking this direction without opposition, yeah, without questioning, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> And when, right. when, they, when I give this dude yeah. direction, he questions. He questions. Yeah. And I go, dude, <laughs> do you realize that this you're taking directions from this lady that you don't even know? Yeah. And you don't question them. <laughs> and he says, no, I, I trust that she's taking me where I want. Because <laughs> so you're telling me yeah. the direction that I'm giving you, I'm taking you to, not to a place where you yes, want to. Yes, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to bargain. <laughs> In Muktugis. Yeah. Hi, Bondon. But that is, and he said, oh, damn, I never looked at it that way. Yeah. But that is it. You take direction. And even now, when I'm working and as an actor, you know what I mean? The directors are your age. Mm, mm. You know, I take direction from them. Did you know the Lion King would be as big as it became? I didn't know that, but uh, the Lion King is going to live for life, my boy. Mm. You are going to take your grandchildren yes. to go watch it. Yes. That is how big it is going to be. All right, next character. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, before we go, how was the international experience? Because when you did Lion King, you were in London. I was in London. For two years, uh, ne? Yeah, for oh, five years. Five years. Yeah, I did two years of, uh, of the Lion King. And then there was, you know, like a year of in and out. And, mm. Or the year of touring with, um, uh, what do you call this play? Othello mm. with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Wow. Uh, Othello with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm. <laughs> yes. That must have been crazy, ne? Ah, dude. Yo. Dude. Uh, that was it. And they spoke to me while I was doing Lion King. Mm. And they said, hey, still, because I'd done uh, Titus Andronicus mm. uh, with, with them. Mm. Now, in Titus Andronicus, I played the Moor. Mm. And the Moor is a villain in Titus Andronicus, mm. you know. And then uh, Anthony Sher was playing uh, Titus, mm. you know, the, the lead role. Mm. And then uh, now, time for Othello. Guys playing their what is it their careers mm. out there mm. so he looks at the whole shakespeare you know catalog catalog yeah you know what i mean and he looks at the place and he had done an amazing richard the third you know uh, i know i saw him also in corlinaeus mm. you know Cor what is it corlinaeus mm. the way is, is the <laughs> you know what i mean and then now it was time for him to play iago mm. and he said I know who my Othello has got to be. Mm. And I was him. Wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> uh, let's go to Achim Roka. Achim Roka. Because I heard you were actually auditioned to be Achim Roka's brother. Busan. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the part that I auditioned for, yeah. you know. Uh, and then, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, and then this guy... Um, and then, well, let me not talk about gossip. Mm. Um, and then later on, I learned, to hey, wow, dude, you've been cast for Archie. Mm. You know, I was like, oh, okay, you know. Was and that remember, your first big big break? I don't know what you what you call as big break. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because prior to that, I'd also done um, Bupilogi Sempe. Oh, oh yes. yes. You know, yes. I did that. Uh, and I was Dr. Mashubadie. Yes, okay, <laughs> okay, I yeah, know. And I was the hottest Dr. Mashubadie. <laughs> You know? Yes, yes. And I did the uh, the and I played Sting. Yeah. And then I mean, dude, nah, I nah, was, nah, nah, nah. You know, it was yeah. not. It was yeah. actually just part but of my you, growing you, career. Journey, yes. my journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, yeah, and Archie fell on my lap, and it was like, hey, yeah, there, there we go. Yeah. You know, this is it. How you was know? it working with them, Funi And uh, <laughs> turbulent, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he Man, yeah. you know, uh, we would say the process are highly, yeah. you know, life is high, the process are didn't say he has, he has to deal with them, yeah. you know what I mean? But that's also when somehow you realize in life that money is horrible. Hey, 
the root of all evil, man. Money is horrible in the sense that, you know, when you get to a point where you can sell your own brother, mm. you know, mm. and mm. you mm. also because you've got to safeguard your purse, uh, that's sad. Are you still tight with them? No, we, we talk. Mm. You know, I mean, when we meet, we greet, we mm. exchange pleasantries, you know what I mean? Mm. Why did you leave, though? Because, I mean, that's a good no, gig. Look, uh, wh wh what made me to leave, and, uh, my, my, my politics, as far as, you know, the industry was concerned, you know, have had, you know, been... Um, one thing that bothered me then was... You see, I grew up in the township, Papa, and I grew up with a consciousness, yes, which yes, was black yes, consciousness, yes, you know. Mm. And then now here I am, and, I, and this is one thing that used to bother me when I was, you know, Archie. And I would walk around and, you know, and people are like, Archie, and, mm. and, and you know, and they're looking up to me. But one thing that used to bother me, and also I've come from a theater background, yeah. and a also protest theater background. Mm. So when you're doing protest theater, you're doing relevant work. <laughs> You know, mm. you're doing work that is challenging the system. Mm. Now you get into this fleecy, fluffy, flu, you know, fluffy, you know, environment mm. of you know pretty faces, whatever, you know. And my my head is saying, nah, man. And when people are looking at me and appreciating me, and I said, but what am I giving them? Oh yes. You know. But also the other thing that was a problem then, there were very few black script writers. What? Hallelujah. On generations. Oh yes. But generations was as black as you can get. Yes, it was written by white people. You know, I am telling you. I mean, when it started, well, Mfundi was part of the writing, but now the writing team and whatever, it was white people. What do they know about being Ajim Ah, uh, bro. Now that is another thing, you know, and that is another thing that also we actually sort of like adjust ourselves into you know, characters that are defined with a white eye. Yay. Yeah. And that will never land. You know, but now even if when we are at a point of basically defining characters that we should tell stories about, we are not telling characters that maybe even represents maybe who our fathers are. 100%. And I can tell you now, a lot of, I think, young black writers, many of them have maybe, what is it, responsible fathers mm. but they have never written stories that are around yes, yes. those people yes. so that was my gripe you know when i left generation hurry you know there is this but also there were other the, you know the other politics you know because where i actually there was a time when i felt that you know what a uh, something is just not right now here what did you think about the Generation 16 saga when all the cast members left? Because, I mean, you started on Generation Yes, yeah. I was sad for them. Mm. But one thing that I do know, what when I made my shout and when I left, nobody was behind me. Ah. I, but I you know, it is everybody's always looking out for themselves. Exactly. Mm. You know what I mean? And then I remember even with that, when they, when they went, uh, you know, when they started mm. and it was, I was like, I say, why don't you, why don't you? I said, but you guys were never behind me yeah. when I left. Yo, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And I, it was as if like, I'm just, show, I'm how, 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 you know, how, howling like in the air. Yeah. You yeah. know, now. What do you think about Generations now? <laughs> I don't watch much. Mm -hmm. I don't what I really don't watch much of it. I yeah, mean, I, I just kind of bump into it and I see and I, mm, mm, you know, it's sad, man. We are bigger. We are better than that. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. In fact, I think a lot of maybe the stories that we are telling about ourselves now, we are better than that. That's all I can say. All right, third character, Hossi on the Queen. <laughs> hey, people love Hossi. Eh? Big. <laughs> How did that come about? Shona approached me, mm. you know, hey, Brasilo, we have this character, da 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 Actually, in, in fact, I actually, you know, learned, I think, two, three days after accepting the role that he was gay, mm. you know. Mm. And I was like, okay. This should be interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Challenge accepted. I'm on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Actually... Hachi is the best gig that I've ever had. <laughs> it's the best acting gig that I look back at it and I say, wow, man, I can pull my shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can pull all my yeah, shit. Yeah. And the, the beauty of it all, for, and the, for me, that is, that's where it goes. It's all about doing. Mm. I was asked, did you do a research and whatever? I didn't do a research. Mm. I just observed. This is Jose. 
You know, mm. I observed Bosomizi, I observed all these other characters. Oh, really? That's all it is. And that is why as an actor, if you're an actor out there, hey, look at life around you. Did you get, hit, also, did you get hit on by a gay guy? When I was doing Generations, funnily. Oh, before Jose. Before Jose. <laughs> the funny thing is that, yeah, yeah. I got hit by gay, you know, by gay guys a couple of times, mm. you know, but. You know, I, 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 when I remember this young boy, yo, you know this young boy, when I, I mean, he was, and it was just like a shame in really, you know, the little guy, <laughs> and, and you know, he was, yeah, and, and you know, and, <laughs> and yeah, and I said, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> Are you hitting on me now? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and I was like, yeah, no, but I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, and this, 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 this. And then, and this is, you know, I'm going to say, yes, but, you know, you know, there's something that I want. Yo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, come on, talk. What is it? Yeah. I don't know. He has a, Mm-hmm. I mean, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and when, but but you can see how he was. was so sincere. U- sincere yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. You know, and uh, the worst thing that I could have done mm. was to say, "Fuck!" Yeah, I exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But uh, in fact, I think you know people call me peaceable. I'm very, I'm very peaceable. Mm. I really am. At best, I'm peaceable. But mm. now, nah, so what did you say? Come you to know? my room? Nah. So I, I just said, uh, but I'm, I do understand. Oh, okay. You know, I do understand. But hey, <laughs> I'm not that Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I unga tabang mudu tata I wonder where he is. Wow. I, I, in fact, I wonder yeah. if he's still alive. My ngbonang la lokhosi. He probably said he is in denial. <laughs> <laughs> he is in denial. Oh my God! <laughs> Finally, he came out. <laughs> how, how is it working with the Fergusons? The, the relationship. It was good. It was good. You know, it it was good. Because a lot of mm, people have come out saying, you know, mm, they've been no, it was good. No, it was not on my side, man. It was not exploitation. It was just a misunderstanding of this, you know, the space that we are in. Okay. Yeah, it was a terrible misunderstanding, especially on their part. Mm. You know, um, I was doing a play, and I would, you know, tell this, you know, I was doing a play, and um, and they felt that because one man, I was doing a one hander on Kentemba. Yeah. You know, and Kentemba was very special to me, mm. in the sense that there is a play, there's a. a a play that I did called The Suit, yeah. which is devised out of a short story that Ken Temba made. Now that, talking about career-wise and actor, uh, barking, acting turning point was crucial mm. for me. Mm. That was the turning point also of just knowing that I think I've got my shit together here. Mm. 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 I've got the shit together. Mm. Uh, I played uh, the short story. It's about um, a guy who finds his wife with a lover and the lover runs away mm. and the lover leaves the suit behind and the husband, the character that I played, uses the suit to punish the woman. Mm. It is a very, it's a psycho thriller actually, you know, because it's a, yeah, it is a psychological thriller mm. because this guy, I mean, to use that suit in Tengilam, uh, to, to, to punish this woman, it, mm. it is so subtle. It is people but who are basically like emotionally, he was emotionally abusive, mm. you know. Uh, and um, most uh, people, I think, who have played the role after me that I have seen, they make a terrible interpretation of him, mm. of Philemon. They make Philemon your regular black man. Mm. Philemon was not your just your regular black man, you know. Philemon was a sophisticated guy, mm. you know. He was a guy... I mean, who woke up every morning, made the fire, you know, if it was cold, mm. made the fire and then prepared breakfast for his wife and took it in bed for him and then went to work. Mm. He was that kind of a guy. What does it have to do with the queen? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? The, the, the story. Yeah. Now, the Kentemba, 
mm. is you know is important to me in that way and we were doing a autobiographical oh, play oh at the time when you were shooting the queen when i was shooting the queen oh i get you and now as i'm shooting the queen and this is what you know basically should i talk about this baby yeah yeah baby says yes no yeah, baby he says oh, no baby yeah. says no ah, ah, now let me leave it ah, now let ah, me leave it because ah, it's uh, ah, eh? Ah, eh? Ah, Yeah, I've moved on, you know yeah. what I mean? But this is like a big thing, baby. But but yeah, you, you know no, it's not it's, you know look, it's not a big thing because actually another thing that I went back and 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 did a short stint as well. Yes. So it's you know, but yeah, it's it's over and um, it's over. For me it was a non, you know, it was a non issue, but it, it you know, it it got turned into an issue. Mm. Mm-hmm. And your your last conversation with Shona Ferguson, do you remember that? Oh yes. Yeah. Last con- conversation was Uh, it was after I had got back as yeah. I said, said hey man hey we, you know uh, Brur, we are going to call you back for more we you need we you need to come back for more mm. that was the last wow. conversation mm. you know when I was you know on my last day of shoot yeah. so it was a good one yeah. you know hence I was even at uh, at his uh, memorial yeah mm-hmm. are you the highest paid actor bull 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 no way who else could I be the highest yeah who else who else is top is no higher than you? I think in I don't know what you guys call it yeah you know uh, maybe estimation you yeah, know yeah. because of you know the you know the following maybe yes. that you know the influence that I have mm. then basically I am rated at that okay for me at this present moment it is fame mm. with no fortune to match <laughs> your first big check how much was your first big check Mm. When, what was it? Can, can you say, it, baby? <laughs> I think. <laughs> and it was, it, it was, and I, and I think it was. I mean, it was uh, like in the nineties. It was, I think, hundred and twenty thousand. Yo, in the nineties. Yeah, late nineties. It was hundred and twenty thousand. Mm. What role was this for? Uh, generation. Yo, that's crazy. But you know, it was because they were buying me out out of a, a project that I was doing. Okay. So they had to buy me out. So that was the biggest check. Last ca- character, uh, Matla on Blood and Water. Um, not much. Matla doesn't have much. Yeah. Matla doesn't have much, uh, you know. But it was nice. Yeah. You know, playing a dad. Yeah. Because you know, when I got in the industry, I was the sad. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it was I think it was it was good. I mean, you know, I already had an experience, but I think also even just the story, mm. you know, and the, the environment and also the Nosipo, mm. the creator and one of the directors. And I think for me to just see, you know, young black people yeah. making it. Yes. You know. And I think also if then if there's another thing that maybe I must actually because nobody's going to give me credit for it if I don't take credit for it. When I left generations and complained about black script writers, a lot of black script writers were trained after that. Danko. 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 Love that. <laughs> Love that. So, you know, and I think, you know, my contribution it is beyond just the profession you know does it register to you when they say blood and waters on netflix like how big it is like, i know i know, I know it is you know yeah. and uh, and uh, yo i mean i was shocked even the you know like even the very first time yeah you know but i think the third series i mean it is rumored that also i mean there was a little bit in the you know more than in the first, first series season, yeah. um first season and then the third series apparently you know my character will have some little ball meat <sighs> And now we're going to see how we, yeah, you know, maneuver. <laughs> you know. Before you go, man, I wanted to ask you: Is it true you called Kuli and told her that her acting is terrible? I, no, I didn't say Kuli, your acting is terrible, to Kuli, because you know, Lena, you know, you guys by social media, yes. you actually, and she just latched onto a private conversation yes. that I was. And Kuli, I mean, I tell you, there were times when I would, I was in London, we would. Speak talk for days for a man yeah. i mean that's how you know friendly yeah. and whatever and then the one day and i was actually walking into my granddaughter's room yeah. and i see 
oh god and uh, you know she's watching uh, gen- uh, whatever uh, the, queen, queen, the queen you know whatever they whatever they call them uh, catch up catch up know? yeah so i sit and i go wow, wow kuli is acting now <laughs> 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 you know i was like okay that's interesting let me sit and watch yeah. so i looked at it and i looked at it and then after that i went just hey where na hey. why didn't you tell me you're an actor hey. you and you wanted to get into this you should have called me man i should have you know and i'm speaking in in those easy terms yeah. you know her name man and then she asks me so what did you think <laughs> hey. you know so i get no man i think you you were just a little stiff hey, you man. know what i mean hey, and because uh, and, and i'll tell you why you know what people don't realize and uh, people almost when they're going to act they, they sometimes they they want to position themselves and they and you know could i'm acting now mm. you know what i mean and that what makes they are acting almost not uh, genuine mm. you know what i mean mm. and and it was purely so they are acting like they are acting yeah <laughs> <laughs> are you well put <laughs> and whereas yeah. acting it is just yeah. do it yeah, yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and you got to understand how to do mm. if ever uh, and doing it and she goes yeah and i was having so many directors this one was telling me this and this one was telling me this and i can understand that confusion yeah. because you don't have the base so when i said let me come in I mean I've given you an acting class here. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes. have a master class. I have oh. a master class. Master. Master. So master. what I'm saying oh, Hore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know So basically when I said you should have given come to me for a class I really meant it yeah. and I was genuinely going to help her to actually make it better yeah. you know yeah. and I was going to act, take acting and uh, breaking break it down to its simplest form and she yeah. was going to realize oh damn that simple? Okay, it is this? that simple mm. and are you podcasting now I'm podcasting wow. Yay. 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 Wow. Yay. I'm going to have to call you yeah, no, <laughs> Same, you know, yeah. uh, you can compare body count. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're on Touch HD. Yeah? I'm on Touch HD. Wow, you that's know. amazing. No, thank you. What's the podcast called? Is it? Is it well, they, it's on Touch HD every Sundays at 12 o'clock, nice. and it's called Open Up with Sil. And you enjoying it? Ne? Oh, loving it. Yeah, loving it, yeah. loving it. And I think also, you know, I'm at the time I think in my life where you know in interrogating one packing things yes. with people it's actually yes. just beautiful yeah. Yeah. you know and um, and also you know because i really you know go deep i would like to go deep into what makes uh, you know people to be what they are mm. you know and somehow you know because i know how my childhood and how my childhood has impacted on who i am today 100%. and i broke it down to you yes yeah. yes you know wow, no, man. Mm-hmm. Brasil, because really we are just man. more than what people see 100% true, you know yeah. true. Do, do you have a question to ask yeah. which actor do you rate of this young generation uh, <clears throat> the boy who's playing my son mm. is going to be something Ama is Your another one eh uh, uh, matla um, the oh, blood KB, and water KB. Oh. Okay. yes uh, <laughs> and ama also you know she's i think she's she's going somewhere yeah. uh, in fact a lot of them a lot of them you know what i mean to some bed to, to ah she's she's gone no you know what i mean you know i mean the, i mean the the, the the list is 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 endless you read nom sam yeah, yeah? oh read? yes oh, oh yeah oh, oh, yes. why why are you surprised you know what i mean <laughs> oh yes i mean you, you know like and, and i think even i think nom sam is based i mean in the states and yeah, 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 no, she's well, well, she's she's exactly killing it you know what i mean so and and and, and being in you see like this i mean bro our acting actually if we sit back and look at it it sucks and we got to be honest about it it's just sure. that somehow nobody is actually sitting down and 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 saying that and analyzing it mm-hmm. you know what i mean but really it sucks wow. and somehow we are hiding behind this colloquializing mm. of you know of the script and mm. on whatever but it really sucks mm. you know because and again it doesn't have many times it's you know like the complexity that when you watch a an american series or a british series and you can see mm. 
you know, like yay man. Hey, acting here mm. is top yeah. sublime. Mm. Yeah. You, 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 you know what I mean. And I guess also maybe it has to do with the fact that, uh, you know, the writing, like the writers are doing a good work. I'll tell you something, mm. uh, because the way they construct scenes, they con the way they construct the uh, the cliffhangers, mm. the interest. Mm. So actually, in most cases, I think I give credit to the creation of these stories, even though maybe somehow I don't really, you know, mm. I'm not crazy about them, mm. but they are crafted well. And the television writing, it's about craftsmanship. And music, uh, these young kids who are you listening to right now? Or is it also I, mean, I, I don't have, I don't have, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know their na the, the names of the song, like I used to know Abu TKZ, oh, you know, okay. you know, those were, you know, Abu Do and all that. You must listen to TKZ, we really love this place. Is it? Yeah, they is were it high. Ne? They were high. They were high, mm. ne? <laughs> Were they? Yeah, they were. They were. Know? And then they did the song. They were singing about <laughs> being high. They yeah, love this place. This yeah. place of highness. <laughs> I don't know that's going to be You know? Oh, man. Brazil. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's been an awesome time having you here, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before yeah. you go, yeah. what do you want to be remembered as? I don't have control over that. Mm. I don't have control over that mm. because my baby mamas are going to think like what a shit he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And some of those that I broke their hearts, yeah. you know, they're going to maybe remember me as that. Yeah. You know, and uh, some guys who hated me, they will be saying, "Thank God he's gone." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I've got no control of that. I can only but do what I do while I'm alive. Mm. When I'm dead, Capish. <laughs> and then we try to describe that. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm trying to tell you <laughs> that when I'm dead, <laughs> it's quiet there. There's nothing. Yeah. Mm. It's quiet. Mm. So I won't hear your voice. I don't feel your hate. Mm. I don't feel. It's done. Mm. Fine. Yeah. Close curtains. Close curtain. Brasilo, thank you so much, man. I feel like this was a master class in terms of acting. No. And hopefully a lot of young people out there, you know, are, it really resonates with them. I hope I get the chance to actually spread the gospel. Mm. You know, I mean, I've got an incubation that I'm running uh, through my foundation. Yes, yes. Congratulations you know, on that, by the way. Yeah, you know, amazing. so I'm, you know, I'm passing on the baton, mm. you know, and I'm looking at also maybe, you know, dealing, you know, maybe getting even maybe the, those who are acting now yeah. to just break it down. Let's leave this whole thing when I get into character and mm. just understand that acting is a science mm. and learn it as a science mm. and uh, just do. Acting is doing and what well, are you doing right now apart from blood and water what else is happening you no know, directing this um uh, piece for oh, university UP. of uup yeah. which is based on bloke mudisani nice. and langston hughes nice. but thank you man you thank know you, i had man. a wonderful chat i've for never real. had a lovely chat like this yeah no welcome you know podcast and i chat. haven't never yeah. never yeah. never just been pillow talk yeah, no, yeah. Are you, <laughs> you're, going, you're going to be part of our pillow talk yeah. now <laughs> You know, what? <laughs> wasn't it just nice? You know, and now I'm good. And, and, look, and then when, when he asked me this question, and this is what I saw in his eye, and this is what... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, but he's okay, you know? <laughs> no, he's thank he's you got so a, He's got a great future ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, man. No, this has been guys. Podcasting Chill. We out of here. Boom. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, me.